you may never look at scissors the same way again after this segment. The founder and CEO of Cecilia, Maggie Fox, joins us with her newfound love of a really old craft. It's surprisingly old. Yes. And, and after I book this, I'm like, I've got really crappy scissors. They're not even cutting a bag of milk. <laughs> <laughs> Join the club. Yes. Join the club. So what got you into scissors? It was really, it was really a question, Annette. It was, where do you buy, which, that I asked in 2018, where do you buy really good scissors? And I, I'm, I'm thinking, I, I'm thinking with embroidery scissors or sewing scissors or something, you probably get them like at a fabric shop, but sure. then you've got some, you have like these that are for wallpaper cutting. I know. Which well, are huge. They're monstrous. These are called um, paper hangers. Okay. And they're from a company in Sheffield called Ernest Wright, who has been making scissors since 1902. Okay. Um, and they have a 26 week waiting list. So wow, to get them. Oh, and yeah, they're I put huge. Them down. They're, they're enormous. 12 inches. And so they're intended to make long, straight cuts okay. when you're doing wallpaper. And then I like to contrast them with these little tiny ones, which I'm not sure if you'll be able to see. But they're absolutely minuscule. And these are little tiny German embroidery scissors uh, from a company called Vasa, which has been making them since about the same time, about 120 years. And, and these are real craftspeople that mm -hmm. are making these, right? Yep. Because you, you've got some of the molds here, and, and you're saying that they, they make them in batches of a thousand. Mm -hmm. So you may order some, but it could be a long time before you get them because until they get to that thousand number, right? Exactly. So what we realized when we did, did our research is that there are all these little family businesses in regions that historically made so Sorts. Okay, and so Italy, France, Germany, Germany, um, okay, and the UK, Sheffield, cutlery, and these little tiny businesses, when people didn't need swords anymore, moved to household blades, and but they're still small. They're very small. So in Germany, for example, there are only three forges. So there are only three forges making these, which we would call a blank. Okay, which is the hot. The machine takes the hot metal and goes gudum and stamps that out. Um, yeah, so they'll order a thousand of them at a time, which is considered a large quantity. Okay. And then they're over time, 50 or 100 at a time, they'll make them into a beautiful pair of scissors based on orders. And then after a few years, they may be gone. So they've run, right. they, they run out of what they call the raw material. They'll go back to the forge and say, we, you know, we'd like to place another order. And that mold that was used to make this shape. To make this. Mm -hmm, is gone. Maybe gone, broken, worn okay. out. And that's it, that pair of scissors, that style is gone forever. Okay, why invest in really good scissors? I think it's one of those things that you almost need to touch them and feel them to really get it. Okay, and hear them. Exactly, you, you go talk ahead, about, go ahead. So you talk about the noise. I'm the gonna get snip. this close to my mic, but not cut my jacket. <laughs> Oh, okay. Isn't that a gorgeous sound? And and they can be sharpened. Absolutely. Correctly. Yeah, absolutely. So these scissors are most often, these ones in particular are from Spain, a company mm -hmm. called Palara Salsona. Same story, sword making region. They make beautiful knives, this company. is actually extremely well known for their knives, but they also make a couple of styles of scissors. So when you buy a pair of scissors like this, it's just like buying a high quality knife, which most of us, you know, if you like to cook, it's something you typically invest in. And so, that's the difference. And okay. you, can, you can go and buy a $2 throwaway pair that is not even made in the same way, mm -hmm. um, that will not stay sharp, that becomes garbage, which is a terrible waste. Or you can invest in a pair of scissors that if you take care of them, they can last a lifetime. Like right. your children. They should could be the family scissors, you, right? <laughs> your children should be fighting over these scissors. Yes, and exactly. not running with them. Not, not running with them. Speaking not running of, with them. You've, you've got little ones here, and, and you've got all kinds of left-handed and right-handed. That's right, that's right. So these are little tiny left-handed scissors. Um, for children, uh, because you know, just because you're little doesn't mean you shouldn't have a bad pair of scissors. Right. Um, and what we have over here are two different kinds of scissors. So there are actually three different kinds of scissors. There's right-handed, left-handed, and what's called semi-left-handed. Okay. So right-handed, you know, sort of your standard yeah. scissor. This yeah. is called a side bent, so it's used for cutting fabric. Fabric. Yeah. Oh, geez. oh. <laughs> literally cutting fabric. <laughs> literally. Um, this is a what is called a true left-handed pair of scissors. So it is a mirror image of the right-handed pair. Okay. Um, so the blades open and close exactly opposite. Now the interesting thing is most lefties have been trained to use the right-handed the right, pair yeah. in your left hand. So when they switch cold turkey, to a pair of true left, they find it really difficult to cut. Very Because cool. the motion is different. So you can actually buy a pair that's got switched handles so it's okay. comfortable on the left hand. We have run out of time, but we're gonna get to all the details for Cecilia up on our website, chch.com. Very cool, I have to show these. Oh yeah, the storks, these are gorgeous, these embroidery cool. ones. Yeah.
going to... No, I'm not going to run. <laughs>